Good afternoon. Welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage. Continuing our series on the TH-475 race transmission for my 72 Nova Twin Turbo LS. Today we're going to be assembling the lower unit. From last night's video, we're working on the rear case bushing and the roller thrust bearing. We were using this ATI output shaft, which we'll be installing today. I was mentioning the scribe marks that are on it. They are for, I went to the ATI website, and I was correcting the information I gave you, almost. They don't tell you which transfer case is which, but I know from experience, because I worked laying on the ground, pulling transmissions in the 80s. And that was the square body Chevy, it was still pretty popular, and I can tell you by looking, if it's the shortest output shaft, on a TH350 or a Turbo 400, you have a 203 full-time four-wheel drive transfer case. New process 203. One of the worst ideas they ever did. Full-time four-wheel drive. The next one, further up, is the aluminum 208 new process transfer case. All in all, a good, nice, lightweight, relatively strong. They used them in everything up to the military pickups that were considered about ton and a quarter. So it's a good transfer case. The best one ever offered in GM, Ford, and Dodge is the 205, and that is full length on a Turbo 400. It may turn up to the adapter in the 205. This line they scribed about a half inch down from the end. ATI offers a shorty tail housing combined with cutting off the output shaft to build a Turbo 400 that would be the identical length to a power glide. And they sell everything to build a power glide with a 32 spline Turbo 400 size output shaft. So from their catalog, you could have a power glide and a Turbo 400 that use the same drive shaft. That was their goal in making their shorty Turbo 400. I don't believe it's real popular. I would caution against the thinking involved having one if you were going to do like a drive and drag event, any of the drag week type stuff, and you've got a weird combination and you're looking for a transmission, everybody in the world's got a short shaft 400. If yours is shorter, good luck. But hey, they make the stuff. That's what that scribe line is for. So I was correct that a 205 uses a two-wheel drive output shaft. And that scribe line there is to make it a power glide length. Woo! We covered it. Now let's get down to assembling our straight cut TH-475 lower gear train. Straight cut because everything is straight. Every gear you look at, planetaries are all straight. I have cleaned and inspected everything. I have new parts at the ready always. The lower gear train from the factory contains three sets of Torrington Barons. They're all three piece each. That's nine pieces in that bag. New bushings, if required. New seals for the center support and also the back of the pump when I get there. I have cleaned and inspected everything. You'll want to check the bushing in the reaction carrier. This is where it rides on the back of the center support. I take the center support and physically put it in here with no other parts. And check the fit and where the stator tube goes down through the center support that's a big long bushing that one and you want to make sure the stator tube is tight i'm not going to tell you you have to change these bushings that's entirely up to you it's they're either good or bad there really is no in between spin all the individual planetary gears to make sure they feel good and the up and down play should be 9 to 24 thousandths. That's a pretty big range. As long as they all feel the same and everything rolls smooth and the gears themselves are good, then you're in good shape. So first up on assembly, I need to take the main shaft and the ring gear. There's a snap ring right here. I'm going to pull the ring gear off the main shaft and install the new heavy duty one. Despite the new main shaft being brand new, it was still full of material from being machined. There's a hole all the way down through, and an oil hole there, and there. So I cleaned and blew it out. 
ready for assembly. I have packed my bearings with assembly lube and I have them in order. This is the back of the center support. You'll notice it's open on the side. You can actually see the Torrington. That makes it unique. The one for the ring gear on the main shaft, which we're going to install first, is the biggest of the three. And the output shaft, you'll see the outside shield goes down. It's very similar to the center support one, but it's closed on the side. As far as which way faces up, it's very clear in the book. Just look at the outside and inside shields. And that's the one we need to drop on first. We just did this. We just changed the main shaft on the ring gear. Now we're going to drop the baron on and start assembly. We'll try some live action. These are my hands. This is my belly. <laughs> I've cleaned all the oil off the metal in the cleaning process. So before I assemble it, anything, I spray it with something that's going to prevent rust. I don't know how long this transmission is going to sit before I actually you know, put oil in it and make noise. So I have assembled the first bearing I need to install over the main shaft next to the ring gear. This goes through the output carrier. It can only go one way because these teeth need to go over the planets right here. So horizontally, so I don't drop the bearing out. I've got it stuck pretty good, but I'm just going to put it over. Give it a little spin and it drops in. Now I can take it as one piece and put it in my bench fixture. Now we need the bearing that goes on the output shaft. It goes on the back of the ring gear for the output shaft. The outer shield needs to face towards the ring gear. The inner shield needs to face up toward the output shaft. So in this position, there's enough assembly lube on it. I'm just going to set it there. I haven't sprayed the inside of this yet, so I'm going to. There's also a bush in there. I put a little assembly lube on it because nothing should be dry. I'm just going to set the output shaft into its final resting place. It's very tight. I haven't had it in here yet, but they're very precise. She's home. Now I gotta go find my snap ring and install that. All right, I've cleaned my snap ring. I always look at which way it used to be in. It doesn't matter, but I try to put it back the way it was. This is the meanest snap ring in the transmission to remove. However, going back in, it's kind of a teddy bear. Just start it around like most of them, and you can do it by hand. Now that's home, I can flip it over. Double check that my bearing is still where it belongs. I've sprayed the sun gear with the rust preventative. It has a tapered side and a flat side. The chamfered or tapered side goes down. So it's going to go in like this. I should be looking at the flat side. It sits right on the bearing against the ring gear. The stator tube, I've lubed up both the bushings. I've lubed the stator tube itself. The early ones had a master spline because the oil holes needed to line up. There's an oil hole there. There's an oil hole there. In later years, like this one, they cut a groove all the way around. So this orientation does not matter. You can put it in any way you see fit. Just like that. From the factory, there was a plastic thrust washer that went between the output carrier and the reaction carrier. There's four holes that these pins sit into when you set the thrust washer down. As I mentioned in the video last night, I'm gonna say it again, the thrust washer that used to go on the output shaft against the case is the same dimensions as the plastic one between the reaction carrier and the output carrier. So we're gonna take a brand new one or your used one. I happen to have a brand new one. I'm gonna put some lube on it. And I'm gonna put it into place. Because in theory, I prefer metal over plastic. You gotta line up the pins into the output carrier, that's ready to go. Your reaction carrier has one side for the sprag, 
The other side has the pinion, the planets, I mean, the pinion gears. Now, being straight cut, it drops straight down. That's good to go. The bearing that goes against the center support, again, look at your orientation, but the inner is going to go up into the center support, so that's going to face up right now. I'm going to drop it right on the top of the sun gear. That's ready to go. Now I have to carefully set my sprag in here. There's a little shelf for it. And then we need to rebuild the center support. I installed the low roller clutch, or sprag, technically a low roller clutch, into the reaction carrier. When the clutch is in good shape, the rollers usually don't fall out. If they fall out, it's not a big deal, but it is a sign that it's wearing. When they're new or like new, like this one, you can shake it around and everything stays in place. But don't panic. If they fall out, you can put it back together. It only fits in one direction. There's no chance of putting it in upside down. And I also lube the bushing where the reaction carrier rides on the center support. Speaking of the center support, I'm going to convert from a steel piston, which had provisions for six return springs, but only comes with three, one, one, and one, with the aluminum piston, which you can see is the same height, dimensionally, has provisions for 12 springs. I have read that the hydraulics overcoming the spring pressure is actually creates a firmer shift and increases clutch capacity. In a nutshell, I see 12 holes. I'm gonna fill it up with springs. The spring retainer, this is a new style, it's perfectly flat. The snap ring is slightly smaller width-wise. The old style has this lip that goes down over the springs and installs the other way. I'm just showing you the lip. And the snap ring was much more robust. You can use either one on either piston. The springs won't fall out of this one, but I like that one better. Okay, I have my center support clean, lubed, ready to go. I have my inner seal protector, Kent Moore J Tool. Can't read the number. If you want one, look it up. Center support inner lip seal protector, Turbo 400. You got my aluminum piston, new seals, lots of petroleum jelly. You'll see the spring pockets need to fit into the pockets in the center support. So you can't rotate the center support when you the piston, when you finally get it in place, you need to start in a good spot. And I like to find the one that lines up with my center support hole. Gently start it down over. Now the inner seal is obviously going to be guided by the protector. The outer one, you can use your finger. I'm going to use the lip wizard. Just going to rotate it around with slight down pressure on the piston. Again, I can't rotate the piston, but she'll start to go. Just keep rolling. To the point where we have it. And you can rotate it. That's the spring pockets moving in the pocket in the center support. Kind of center it. Now we're ready for the springs. And the retaining plate. Now remember everything I just told you about the older plate being better? Well, I only have one. So the 475 is actually the lesser of the two transmissions. When it comes down to parts choices, that's how I rank them. The other one's going to be a higher horsepower rating. If there's a better part available, it's going to go in that one. So if I had two, I'd use it in both. But I'll show you that it really doesn't matter. It's just a personal preference. Okay, the springs are in, the retaining plate and snap ring are on. When there's only the stock amount of springs, which is three, you can remove the snap ring, push down on the plate and remove the snap ring with your fingers. With 12, it definitely has more pressure, but it's not insurmountable. It's not like you're compressing a coil spring in the front end of a car. Uh, as you can see, you can see the edge of the spring, but there's no physical way they can pop out. I do just prefer the one that rolls down over the edge. So. But this will work just fine. It'll work fine with three springs or any number up to 12. I'm not sure you'll ever notice the difference in the driver's seat, but it's personal choice. 
what I chose today. Next up is the scarf cut Teflon ceiling rings for the center support. Um, as we've gone over a million times, I'm going to leave the second one back off. It's optional if you read the valve body instructions, at least with the ATD, they make it clear that you can leave that or you can take it off. They don't care. They've done the magic in the valve body, everything that has to happen. I leave it off. Not only do I leave it off, I often machine those two grooves off, but I'm not going to in this one. I'm just going to put one, two, and three. My method is I pack it with petroleum jelly and I push the seal in, especially the scarf area, which is where it comes together on an angle like that. I make sure that's pushed into the petroleum jelly. It holds it in place so we can slide the direct drum over it eventually. On the back side of the center support, there's a thrust washer that goes up in that hole. I retain it with a little assembly gel. Most of the time they're plastic. Uh, brass ones are available. The TH-475 does come with a brass one. I'm gonna reuse it right up in there. And before I lower this onto the gear train, I'll lube the stator tube bushing. All that's left to do is lower the center support onto the gear train. Again, my seals are on, my thrust washer is installed, I'm lubed up, give her a little rotation, she drops right in. My lifting tool, make sure it's fully assembled, it's only failed me once and you saw it here live, only because I it's a spring-loaded clip with the collar on it, and I pulled on it a little too hard trying to get it out of the rusty case. That locks over there. That snaps on there. I'm ready to go. I do typically take a Sharpie and mark where the center support bolt is going to be. So when I'm lowering down there, I don't have to guess which lug. I mean, it'll become ob obvious if it's wrong, but I like to get it first try. If you do an online search, for a Turbo 400 reaction carrier float or thrust, that's what they're talking about. It leads you to an article written by Sonax about all the TH400 thrust issues and repairs. Very interesting. If you have a center support that measures 330 thousandths on the lug, you need a 40 thousandths fretting ring that sits in the case and the center support sits on top of it. If this measures 370 thousandths, you don't need the ring. For a band, I'm going to use the stock 44,000 mile TH-475. It's perfect. Probably better than anything you can buy that's universally accepted. If I was going to buy one, I'd buy the Kevlar version. A new one, but when available, I'm going to use a good condition stock band. Back inside the case, I have put the Shim at the very bottom with some assembly lube and the bearing on top, black side down. I rotated the band into position. I like to go up through the servo apply hole. Push on it, make sure it's relaxed and even. You can see me pushing on it. And the fretting ring, I put the opening in the gap. So all around the lugs, the center spot will be actually sitting on the ring not on a space. Now let's lower it into the case. Let's hope I don't have a repeat of dropping it like I did one time right on camera. I marked my lug so I know which way to go. She's home. Now I can always tell if my end play is close, if I'm able to get the bolt in and the beveled snap ring and it still turns. So let me do that and we'll check it out. The beveled snap ring installs flat side down, bevel up just like this. And the center support bolt just threads up through the middle. I got the bolt installed and tight and the beveled snap ring. It's a good sign when that happens and it still turns. I like to take a screwdriver. You can get right at the bearing right here. Just kind of rock it back and forth and you can stick a feeler gauge in there and measure it, but eventually you just get a feel. I like it. That's done. Next up, intermediate clutches. Well, it's 90 degrees out, very humid, 
And even in here, it's starting to get a little stale. I can't shoot videos with the fan running because that's all you would hear. So just been sweating it out, trying to get it done. So I'm glad today's over. This video got a little bit long, so I'm going to cut it short. We'll be back at it again soon, probably tomorrow. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Ring the bell. I appreciate every one of you. Have a good night.